This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're now going to introduce the analysis of financial performance and position, which makes up 25% of the syllabus. So it's a really key aspect that you need to be familiar with as you go into the final exam. Analysis of financial performance and position is essentially made up of two aspects the ratio analysis and the analytical review. The ratio analysis is very literal. It's just calculating and crunching the numbers. So there could be half a dozen questions or so purely calculating numbers. When you calculate the numbers, you might have to calculate ratios based on profitability. So things that you've seen before, such as gross margins, operating margins and net margins, but also then introducing new areas such as return on capital employed and asset turnovers. Liquidity should be familiar to you already with your current and quick ratios. Working capital, likewise, from F1, looking at inventory, receivable and payable days. Solvency, we've touched upon also when we've had a look at the world of gearing and our ratios of debt to equity. And then one of the new aspects that you see in F2 is looking at your investor ratios, some of which you may have seen if you take a keen interest within the stock markets such as price earnings ratios and earnings per share. The ratio analysis tends to be the easier aspect to answer in the exam. The analytical review is a little bit more of a challenge and does get you to think about things because what the analytical review does is explains or gets you to think about the explanation of the movement in the balance and or a ratio. So essentially questioning why it has moved. And when we're talking about movement, we're talking about a balance moving from last year to its current year figure, or alternatively, comparing our results to that of, say, a competitor, say, company B, or maybe even the industry average. So there's two types of question that you will get. One, purely calculating the numbers and ratios, or two, asking you to go through there and think about why a movement has occurred in a balance and a ratio. That is that little bit more challenging, as that usually encompasses the select all type of question. When you're thinking about the analytical review, always think about user focus. There could be a user focus given to you within the question. So users of the accounts could be there, such as your shareholders, your suppliers or your banks, the providers of finance, competitors, the government and customers. There are other user focus groups, but for now, we'll just consider those five. And what I want you to go through and do is just take a few minutes to have a look at each of those users and go through and think about what each user would require when it's looking at the ratios and the balances. So would they prefer to focus on performance, liquidity, working capital, solvency, or your investor ratio? So I'd recommend that you just pause the video have a think about it. When you come up with some ideas, you can then go through there and start the video again. So good luck and enjoy, and I'll see you all in a few minutes. Okay, so we're back. You either took my advice and went through and stopped the video, or maybe you didn't bother and you're just there reading and listening our way through. So let's go through and think about it. Yeah, hopefully you've done that already. Shareholders, the shareholders are looking at profitability so they're looking at a return aren't they but when they're looking at a return they want to balance that up with the level of risk if you have a higher level of risk you would expect a higher level of return and when we're thinking about risk we're thinking usually about the level of gearing at this level and return is thinking about profitability or maybe some investor ratios suppliers and banks well they want their money back so we're thinking there along the lines of liquidity and solvency. Liquidity is very much looking at the suppliers getting their money back in the short term. Solvency is thinking, will the business be around for the long term, particularly from a bank's perspective, to pay off the loan that you have with the bank. Competitors want to look at your performance compared to theirs, don't they? So they want to look at the sales. From the sales, they want to look out at the profits. But because different companies have different levels of profits, we would want to go through there and look at the margins that each of those businesses make. So if you're looking at EasyJet and Ryanair, they have different levels of sales and profitability. 
So that makes it a bit more difficult to compare. So when you compare the gross margins and operating margins, you get a better like for like picture. The government want to go through there and tax your entity. So they will be focusing on your profits and whether or not your profits are reported correctly. But they might want to think about other factors as opposed to just financial factors and maybe look at non-financial factors such as job creation. So that's something you need to think about above the numerical analysis is thinking more along the lines of non-financial factors as opposed to just financial factors. The last user group is there as your customers. You are a customer of open tuition. I hope you're enjoying the service that we provide. And that's what you are essentially looking for. You're looking for the service provided and hoping that it is a quality service that will ensure that you get through your exams. The other aspect that we would need to go through and consider is looking at business factors or the different types of industry because ratios are not standardized in terms of the numbers that they produce. They're standard in terms of how we calculate them, but different businesses, different industries will have different figures that you would expect. So we need to look at the manufacturing process whereby they take, is it your raw materials, subject the raw materials to a process and output finished goods. So we will need to think there about the working capital cycle and how long we would expect that to be for particular manufacturing businesses. When you're looking there at your service business, service businesses tend not to have all that much with regards to cost of sales and also tend not to have much with regards to intangible assets. So when you're comparing the service industry, there are some factors that you would need to bear in mind. Similarly, with your construction business, you need to go through there and think about how a construction business is funded and how it operates. They start constructing some houses or an office building today. They may not go through there and get the cash in, for maybe two or three years time once the houses or the office building are complete. So they could have a very, very long working capital cycle compared to the manufacturing or service industry. So it's always worth bearing in mind whenever you're thinking about the business with regards to your analytical review. The third and final aspect that you need to consider is thinking about the accounting policies because different companies adopt different accounting policies. Now, as international accounting standards become more aligned with other accounting bodies' rules, the accounting policy choice tends to become less and less. But what we have here, the first one that we could consider, is the revaluation model versus the cost model. If we revalue our assets, that means you will have a higher capital employed base because your assets are now worth more, plus the depreciation that you charge will be higher than what you charge under the cost model because under the revaluation model, you charge depreciation based upon the revalued amount. So if we have different levels of capital employed, different depreciation, then that's going to go through there and have an impact on our asset turnover ratios, as we'll see later, and also our performance ratios with relation to depreciation. The other policy to consider goes back way back to C2. When we look at FIFO, first in, first out, versus your average cost of valuing your inventory. First in, first out values your year-end inventory at the most recent purchase prices. So therefore, if prices are rising, your year-end inventory will be the highest value of inventory that is possible and higher than your average cost. If you have a higher clothing inventory, then you'll have a higher inventory asset base and you will also have higher profitability as you charge a larger credit to your closing inventory within cost of sales. So it will distort your assets in terms of inventory and it will also distort your profitability. The other one that we consider is your financial assets. You have a choice about where you take gains or losses. They could go to profit or loss. They could go through other comprehensive income. Again, if you're comparing one entity to, to another, then you could have different performance based upon where those gains or losses are taken. What we can also go through and consider, just to throw in at the end and make it a fourth scenario, is looking at one-off or non-recurring items. It's important that you consider this when you're looking at your analytical review, because if something arises in one year and not the next, then to get a more accurate picture of the movement year on year, it will be beneficial to remove those one-off or non-recurring items from your analysis. Examples 
could be restructuring or any sort of general provision that you may have because the restructuring will have increased your costs and reduced your profitability in one year. So therefore, let's remove the effect of the restructuring to get a better like for like comparison. You could have an impairment of an asset. Okay, your asset may have been damaged and reduced in value. So therefore, again, that's one large expense this year that may not have happened in previous years. So therefore, it may be beneficial to remove that within your analysis. If we have the acquisition or disposal of a subsidiary, so on consolidation, you will have therefore more revenue, more costs, more profit if you've acquired a subsidiary in the year compared to your revenue, costs and profit in the prior year. Likewise, if you've disposed of a subsidiary, you no longer consolidate the revenues, the costs or the profit. So your revenues, costs and profit will be lower this year compared to what they were last year. And then finally, before I send you off on your merry way to work through the remaining videos, you have the disposal of a non-current asset. The disposal of a non-current asset gives you a profit or a loss. And again, it may be beneficial to remove that profit or remove that loss when you're comparing things one year to the next. So that's it. That's your introduction to what's going to happen over the subsequent videos. Enjoy what's to come. And really do make sure that you practice the questions because this area of the syllabus is a massive 25% of your final exam. Good luck.